Master, we've arrived. something, my young lad. The master of the world today is this. Money. <laughs> Cheerio then, lad. Tell me, sir, do you have a master? <laughs> well, yes, of course. Even two, actually. It's that magnificent couple over there seated at the terrace. My mistress is one of the great ladies of this town, and as to my master, his portents and knowledge surpass anything one could imagine. In fact, I'm bound to them body and soul. But they're calling you. Go on. Madam, sir, please take a seat, my good man. Well, my friend, what brings us the honour? Well, I'm not really quite sure. I opened the carriage door, and my master wasn't there. Instead, a crowd of strangers. I really don't know what to do. Oh, it's true. You are a sorry sight, considering the state of your dress. <laughs> well, now, tell me you seem to be a bit lost. But uh, we knew you'd be coming, and, and we were expecting you. We can do everything for you. If you come with us, you'll never feel lost again. You'll really be somebody. Look, look at that man. See how he sees himself. Let me suggest that we become your masters. You would work with us and for us. All we would ask in return is that you belong to us, body and soul. So what do you say? Isn't it an appealing prospect? Well, all right then, cabby. Farewell. Too bad for you. What's the matter with you, sir? You don't look too good. No. It's that terrible couple over there. Oh, yes. I understand. 
Hey, come closer, sir. I've given them a nickname. <laughs> I call him Mr. Self-Love. I call her Mrs. Vanity. Hey, not bad, eh? Go and talk to him. He knows everything. Thank you, sir. And you, sir, who's your master? Oh, my master. Now, that's a very good question. But one should perhaps look at it in a more abstract sense, philosophically, in a way to raise the level of the debate, you see. Well, here you are. When a man realises that he's missing something fundamental that would bring meaning to his whole life, Then he can set out to seek his inner master. So then, what do you think? I'm not really sure. But you seem to be a very knowledgeable man. And you're an intelligent man. Welcome to the guild of the reasoning thinkers, those who rely on books. It's always like that. We always have too much subject matter, and it's all jumbled up too. Good Lord. Here, take your book. Keep it, by all means, keep it. But there's no room left for your master. What? Well, I beg your pardon, sir. I'm looking for my master. Long ago, men worshipped the sun as a god, and the break of day was considered as sacred. In ancient times, the course of the sun across the sky was often likened to that of a carriage drawn by winged horses and driven by the sun god. According to ancient tradition, man contains within himself the sun, the planets, the entire cosmos. In early India, the sacred writings compare the structure of man to that of a carriage. Only the self, as the master of the carriage, knows the aim of life's journey. Twenty-five centuries later, Rodin's thinker seems to provide a symbol of man's perplexity in front of his destiny. Adapted to the understanding of the contemporary man, this very old tradition takes the shape of a carriage like one can see in the streets of our towns and cities.
In this allegory, the carriage stands for the body. The horse represents emotion, feeling. As to the driver, he represents the mind. Only the master, riding inside the carriage, knows the aim of the journey. But in many cases, this master is absent and has been replaced by a score of small masters. The driver and horse speak very different languages and often don't understand each other. The driver uses words and ideas. When there is no master, thought, strengthened by its certainties, believes that it alone knows what reality is. not enough to think. Do I really have a master? Do I know what thought is? I haven't got the slightest idea. I suppose he must be some kind of expert, then. That's it. He's sitting. But what about me? Do I think? What a strange posture.
above you, as in the very depth of your being, there's a world of silence which comes forth as an utterly secret and untapped source, shapeless and timeless. Should you slip away from it, suddenly remove to exile, do not think that it was a mere illusion. Illusion is believing that the visible iron is more real than the hidden gold.
What happened to you? It's my horse. It doesn't want to bear anymore. Do I understand? Yes. Has it occurred to you that the place you want to take him could be very dangerous for him? You'll never manage with brute strength. Especially if you think of all the things he's got to carry. Sir, I, I don't know who you are, but uh, I'm really pleased to meet you. What's all that? I never knew I was carrying so much luggage. Yes, it's true. Every man carries far more than he could ever imagine. But there are times when he can realize it. But then what can I do? I haven't got a master. My horse won't. And now I've got all that to carry. My young friend, first of all, you must try to learn your horse's language. You don't understand him. And about that luggage of yours, when you find your master, he will know how to take care of it. Take this. This is a memory stone. It may help you to remember the essential question that lies within you. The essential question? Goodbye, my young friend, and good luck. But, sir, who are you? How am I supposed to use the memory stone? Poor old boy. I'm ashamed. Forgive me. Come on, let's go then. Easy. That's a good boy. Good, good. <laughs> will I find the path that will lead me to my master? The young woman isn't there anymore. Lift, right, lift, right, lift, hook. I'm supposed to prevent anybody from entering here. So that's impossible. I must absolutely go and see that statue. No, it's absolutely and utterly forbidden.
I feel just like that tree. Leafless, full of knots. A memory stone. What was it the old man said? Oh yes, to remember the essential question. Where can the essential question be found?
guardian of this place. What you seek here. The thing that is most precious to me, but that I can't seem to reach. The memory stone brought you here. To this place that lies between two worlds. The space that is now opening up within you is ageless. You may find what you're seeking, but for that you need a key, and the key involves the horse. But how to find it? I did see a flying horse in my dream. It spoke my master's language. And then there was that beautiful young woman and the statue of the horse. I'm sure it moved. But alas, I couldn't get anywhere near them. It's true. That which is most precious to us. We find it nearly impossible to reach. Look. All of those you see here have felt that deep craving of the being. That intense longing to recover their lost unity. Many of them have left a sign. A testimony of their quest. Their example can be of help to other seekers. Yet, everyone must live the experience for himself. Your quest must become a struggle against oblivion. A fight that takes place above all within yourself. You must die to everything you know in order to find the path. It is truly a great mystery. Now, you must become a warrior. Take this sword and learn to fight. Oh no, I'm really not very keen on that. You have no choice. There's no turning back now.
The space inside is as boundless as the space outside. Is there a force that leads back to the source? Master, we've arrived. 